Hello, Tammy Humphreys here for your daily spiritual check-in. It is Thursday, January 28th, 2021, and today we're going to look at a passage from Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 to 4, where we read, Jesus, Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Suddenly, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. Leprosy in the Old Testament times represented a, both a physical and a spiritual or ritual uncleanness. It was a debilitating skin disease that was considered highly contagious and sometimes considered to be the punishment or consequence of some kind of sin. In Leviticus 13, we read that this is what those who have leprosy were supposed to do. Those who suffer from a serious skin disease must tear their clothing and leave their hair uncombed. They must cover their mouth and call out, unclean, unclean. As long as the serious disease lasts, they will be ceremonially unclean. They must live in isolation in their place outside the camp. So those who suffered this disease were excluded from normal social interactions. In a small community, this is very isolating. It was considered a living death, both physically and socially. And it was therefore an isolation from God as much as it was from people because the person was unable to participate in religious activities until they had recovered and were able to be pronounced clean by the priests. So in their time of immense suffering, at the point of their deepest needs, very often these people may have felt more disconnected from God than ever before. So when this man saw Jesus, something in him clicked. He had hope, and he boldly got close enough that Jesus could reach out and touch him. And he knelt before Jesus as an act of humility, and he called Jesus Lord, indicating that he knew the identity and authority that Jesus had. This man expressed his faith that Jesus had the ability to heal him. The only question the man seemed to have was if Jesus had the motivation or willingness to do so. Would Jesus be willing to acknowledge someone on the outskirts of society and bring restoration and healing to him? And what was Jesus' response? Well, Jesus didn't seem to be at all concerned about catching this man's disease or becoming unclean himself because he reached out and touched that man. Who knows when the last time this poor man had experienced the care of another person's touch? And then Jesus said those special words, I am willing, be clean. And the man was instantly healed. But what's interesting to note here is that Jesus gave this man specific instructions to follow before he could live completely free. He couldn't go and be restored to his community until he was properly restored in his relationship with God. He was to follow the rules God had established in the Old Testament law in Leviticus 14. The offerings and the presentation to the priest was not an immediate thing. It wasn't like he could just go to church and drop some money in the offering plate and all was well. No, it was a week-long process of shaving and cleaning and offering sacrifices and presenting himself to the priest not once but twice. So this got me thinking. It, thinking in our own world, in our own situation, there have probably been times where we have all felt disconnected from God and people, especially in this time of pandemic. And as we seek to be restored, 
perhaps that when we seek our healing, that we partner with God in this process. Not all of Jesus' healing miracles recorded in the Gospels are like this one that we just read. But this one, I think, shows us that sometimes we do partner with God in living into the experience of healing. Sometimes, Jesus, well, always, Jesus is completely willing to heal us. Heal us. But sometimes we do need to follow the precepts that God has set up in order for us to live into the healing that Jesus has for us. Perhaps we need to let go of some bad habits and start doing some healthier things. Perhaps we need to be obedient to what the Lord says in His Word. Perhaps we need to make an adjustment in our thoughts and beliefs. Remember, this healing was also a cleansing, a purification. I think this goes along with what Baxter was preaching about in his sermon on Sunday. Perhaps sometimes there are some things that we need to do to clean out our temples, our physical bodies, so that they can be the appropriate receptacles of the Holy Spirit and the power and the healing that God has for us. Overall, the biggest encouragement I get from this passage is that Jesus is all about healing and restoration. He is willing and able to make us whole. Will you submit to him as Lord of your life today? He has a plan and a purpose for you. And I beseech you, beg you to turn to him. We love you and are praying for you. God bless you.